This is one of the most polarizing tools on the internet, the Festool Domino. People love to hate it. And the people who love it all say the same thing. They say it's fast and it's easy. The problem with that is that wasn't my experience the first time I used a Domino. In fact, I was pretty intimidated and confused by it. I didn't know how to set it up. All the different numbers and metric confused me. I was in the middle of a project borrowing it from a makerspace. Thankfully, my friend Robert was there. He looked at my project, he looked at the domino, and in about 15 seconds, he did some wizardry and he set the machine perfect for my project and even told me what domino tenon I should use. Now, since that project, I went on a quest to figure out everything Robert knows about the domino that I don't know. And I have to say, I probably understand about 80% of its capacity. But here's the thing, I've not used it yet. I got one of my own, but I haven't used it. I thought it would be interesting to not just make a video explaining the domino, but to make a video explaining the domino and then use it for the first time to test to see if it's actually fast and easy like all the people on YouTube say it is. So if you wanna learn about the domino, the ins and outs, and even some things even people at Festool didn't know when I shared it with them, this video is for you. And maybe you have a domino already and you know everything there is to know about it. Get a drink, pop some popcorn. I think you might be entertained and you'll probably learn a thing or two you didn't know. Now before I test the five common joints people use with the domino, let's do a quick overview to demystify what all these settings mean. That way we're on the same page. This first knob is the width of your mortise. Most people probably will use it on the tight setting. There's a medium setting and a wide setting. The first mistake you wanna avoid is never change the width of your mortise when the machine is off. There's some like transmission gears in here and there's been a lot of dominoes sent back to Festo for repair because people have tried to jam this and move it and it gets harder and harder and then they destroy the gears in here. So one of the most important things you can remember if you're ever using a domino is make sure you change the width when the machine is on. Now the big brother to this, the 700, I don't think it matters, you can change it on or off, but for this one, make sure you're changing the width when the motor is on. The next feature is this fence angle, and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you ever use the biscuit joiner, it's very similar. There's some positive stops at 45 and a couple of angles in between. Most beginners are probably going to use this in this position when they're plunging down or in the 45 or 90 degree position. That's pretty easy. But here's where I got confused, is when you're setting your height of your material, there's two ways you can do it. The first way is this quick depth stop. There's a bunch of numbers that are all metric. And those numbers represent the thickness of whatever material you're working on. Loosen this knob, change your depth setting in the window, and now your fence is perfectly in the center of your workpiece. Now, if your material happens to be a weird thickness that isn't represented in these quick stops, you can always use this gauge to dial in the right height. But be warned, that removes some of the repeatability away from it. So a lot of times, it's not a bad idea just to use this depth gauge and get close to where your middle is. You don't really need to be in the middle. The settings for your mortise depth is used by splitting whatever tenon you want to put in by half. So if you're putting in a 50 millimeter tenon, you will most of the time want to do a 25. Now there's other times where you get really creative with this and you put a tenon uh, deeper in one side and other and you can do some math. But for beginners, most of the time it's just easier. Whatever domino tenon you're using, cut it in half. That's your setting here. And here's a cool feature a lot of people might not know, and I'm not even sure this was in the manual, but if you see this machined metal part right here, that distance is 10 millimeters from the bottom of the base. And what's brilliant about this is the distance from the bottom of the base to the center of the mortising bit is 10 millimeters. So if you ever need to reference the middle of your mortise, you can use this part right here on the machine. These reference tabs are really handy. They are measured 37 millimeters from the inside to the center of the bit. Now, what's really cool about this is a lot of times when I've joined boards together using other methods, I always end up measuring about an inch and a half to two inches from the end of the material to put my first 
biscuit or whatever I'm using. With this feature, you no longer need to measure because 37 millimeters is roughly, I think an inch and a half. I'll put the exact measurement on screen, but you can get started on your project right away without marking measuring just by referencing this tab on either end. And that's where the domino really begins to shine. You have precision and repeatability very, very fast. We're gonna test that out later. Another thing I'm really interested in finding out is, is the dust collection on this thing any good? I've used a biscuit joiner in the past and even with a vacuum, it makes a mess. So that's something that I'm gonna be looking for. When I hook up my dust extractor, does it even work? This next section about the Domino tenon is really fascinating because there's a lot of really cool details that I've picked up about this thing that a lot of people don't know about. The first is these are made out of European beach. At first, I didn't really pay attention to that. But when I started asking around why European beach, the answers I got were fascinating. First, European beach, depending on who you talk to, is as hard or almost as hard as hard maple. There are two different websites that say two different things. It's as hard as hard maple, but it isn't as expensive. So it's a hardwood, but very economical. My favorite part about European Beach is that it is considered to be the most available and certified sustainable hardwood in the world. So making tenons out of European Beach is the best choice on all fronts. It's hard, it's cheap, and it's the largest sustainable hardwood in Europe. And when you talk about the Festool Domino, a lot of people will say, well, just use dowels, they're the same thing. Not really. There's two benefits that the Domino has over dowels. One is it has over twice the glue area as a dowel. But second, because your glue area is on the face, you can use a wide mortise to um, finesse your fit without losing any of the strength because you're only sacrificing the contact on the wood on these sides. With a dowel, not only do you have half the glue surface, but you have no adjustability. Speaking of glue, if you look at a Festool Domino, there are these pockets, and those are for holding glue. Quite possibly my favorite detail about these tenons are these ridges on the side. At first, I thought they were like a design feature or something, but they actually form a function. If you put too much glue in your domino joint, there's a chance that with hydraulic pressure, it could eject it. But these ridges give a channel for excess glue to escape your joint so that you can bottom these out and have all the glue you need without too much. Actually, the most surprising detail I found about these tenons is they're actually not as advertised. This is a 10 by 50 domino. That means it is 10 millimeters thick and its length is 50 millimeters. But actually it's not 50 millimeters. It's roughly one and a half millimeters shorter. If you take a caliper to all the domino tenons, you will find that they are exactly as wide and thick as they claim to be but all of the lengths are about one to two millimeters shorter, and that's on purpose. They make them slightly shorter on purpose so that you can have area for your glue, you can have a little bit of wiggle room, there's room for expansion and contraction, and it would be weird having all of the settings on the side of the domino to be you know, half of 49 or whatever. So they just say these are in even numbers, your depth settings are in even numbers, and it makes the math for people using the machine way easier but none of the dominoes are as long as they say they are. A big area of confusion for me was understanding which domino to choose because there's so many different sizes, especially if you go to the store and you look at all the boxes, like I don't wanna buy the wrong one. It's actually pretty simple. I'm sure you've heard of it, but when you're doing joinery, there's the, the third rule, which is whatever thickness your board is, you really want your tenon to be a third of that. So if you're working with 18 millimeter plywood, for example, a third of 18 millimeters is six. So you would choose a domino tenon that is six millimeters. Now, when the length matters is when you're putting pieces in like this. In that case, if you have 18 millimeter plywood, you don't want to use a six millimeter domino because most of the dominoes are six by 40. And what's half of 40? 20 millimeters. And if you were to uh, put 20 millimeters into an 18 millimeter sheet of plywood, you're gonna go all the way through. In that situation, you just wanna go down to the five by 30, where you put half of 30, 15 millimeters into the piece, and you still have three millimeters on the other side. It gets kind of confusing, but once you start working with the wood and using this, it'll make sense. The common tenon sizes are 10 by 50, eight by 50, eight by 40, six by 40, five by 30, 
And then recently, I think Festool introduced a 4x20. I don't know like how recently, but I don't think the 4x20 was original. After studying this, what I uncovered is that when people go to use the 4x20, which when are people using <laughs> tendons this small? It gets confusing because you don't have a 10 millimeter mortise depth. The lowest mortise depth setting you have is 12. And this is where Festool is kind of brilliant. If you look at all the cutter heads down from 10 millimeters, eight millimeters, six millimeters, and five millimeters, they're all the same height, except for the four millimeter. The four millimeter is 10 millimeters shorter than all the others. That means when you go to plunge in with the four millimeter cutter head, you're going to be 10 millimeters shorter than what is on the tool. So all you need to remember, if you're ever using the four by 20s, is just set your machine to 20 millimeters in your depth setting because when you put a four millimeter cutter head in here that is 10 millimeters shorter in its depth and you go 20 millimeters, you have created a 10 millimeter mortise. The first mistake a lot of people make is they buy the domino and they jump straight into a project that they bought it for and that's kind of asking for trouble. If you're new to the domino, like me, get some scrap pieces and test everything on scraps before you jump into your expensive hardwood project. Over tightening the cutter is another mistake people make. I'm kind of guilty of this. I always think the tighter something is, the better, but apparently you don't have to over tighten. You just want to snug it up. A big mistake people make is they don't dry fit their domino joints and they go straight to glue. And imagine the headache you would have if you cut something wrong, grab the wrong bit, or you chose the wrong setting and there's glue everywhere. Do yourself a favor and get in the habit of dry fitting all of your joints before you use glue. Now, you're going to run into an issue if you do this with the domino because the domino tenons are, at least the ones I have, they're about a millimeter wider than the mortise that is cut, which gives you a really, really tight fit. Now, one tip I've seen a lot of people do, and I'm going to do the same thing, is to get a little box like I have here, put some tenons in it, and slightly sand the ridges so that you can put these in and pull them out. On my first project that I used this on when I borrowed it, uh, I had a difficult time getting the dominoes out when I did a dry fit. So uh, sanding these down is a great idea. And then you can just mark on there, test, that way you know that domino is slightly looser than all the other ones and it's meant for dry fit testing. A big no-no that apparently people do on accident is thinking that they're referencing off of this plate and instead, because they're on the table, they're actually referencing off of this base. So a tip is to always have your piece off of the table. That way you can verify that you're referencing off of this fence and not accidentally referencing off of the base. Getting misaligned joints would be really, really frustrating. And I see people do that a lot when they're going through a lot of pieces. They don't mark which face they're referencing on. So it's a good practice to use a pencil or a piece of blue tape if you can't mark on a piece to always mark which is your top surface and always reference off the top. That way you never accidentally flip them over. This next tip is kind of counterintuitive because this looks a lot like the body of an angle grinder and how you would hold an angle grinder is like this. But what happens when you plunge like this is apparently you're placing a lot of pressure out of line. So if you watch the people at Festool and the pros who do this all the time, you'll see they actually push using the plug back here. That way they have pressure in line with the tool. If you're grabbing too high up, it would be easy to rack the tool out of alignment. And despite the popular trend, the patented Hibs hip thrust probably isn't the best way to get a solid mortise on the domino. The last mistake I'll share with you that I would be prone to make is by putting too many dominoes in. Maybe in this case, too much of a good thing could be a bad thing because when you cut all these mortises in like really, really close together, you're weakening your substrate. So as a general rule, maybe keep six to eight inches between your dominoes. That way you're not weakening your material too much. There are three pro tips that I uncovered when talking to people who have used the domino for over 10 years, some 16 years, and they're really too cool not to share. The first is using the machine in loose mode. Now being a beginner, my thought is why would you want to use these extra settings when the tight mode is fine? And when I borrowed my friend's domino for this first time that I used it, 
I actually could have used this advice. I did all of my dominoes on a seven foot piece of pine on the tight setting. And while I did get the alignment right, if I was slightly off on one of them, it would have been a disaster. And so what the pros do is on your first set of dominoes, do the tight setting. And then everyone after that, use the loose setting. That way you have a little bit of wiggle room to get the alignment perfect. My first thought on thinking on that is, wouldn't you be sacrificing strength? And the answer is not really. Because of where the glue face is on these tenons, you're not really going to lose any strength moving left to right because your height of your mortise is still very, very, very tight. I was asking Peter Millard about this and here's what he said about the domino. My favorite way of looking at the domino is that it's a precision tool that lets you work loosely, not sloppily, but loosely. Now the kit that I got came with a lot of accessories. I'll show them in my test. These ones are really, really cool. They're called cross stops. They go on the base and provide a positive place for you to reference your existing mortise. If I didn't know about this, we just measure out where I want all of my mortises, draw a line, and then line them all up by eye. But with this, you don't even need to mark. You don't even need to measure. You can set your width right here, and then you put this pin in your mortise that you cut and go down the line, making quick work. Last pro tip I'll share with you that I thought was brilliant is I was talking to a friend at a local lumber store, and he was saying what he likes to do is he uses the domino in the widest width setting, and that gives him a really, really wide mortise, and then he makes his own custom tenons out of European beach so that he can have thick tenons. All right, enough talking about the tool. I'm gonna to take all that information that I have learned over the course of a couple of months studying this, and I'm going to try five different joints that are kind of common to using the domino. We're gonna see if I mess them up or if I'm able to get them right the first time. And if I mess them up, I promise I will show you. I won't hide anything. I'm gonna to try to put this shelf permanently into this piece of plywood. And to do that, we're gonna use the five by 30 dominoes because if you did the next size up, the six millimeter, the six by 40s, what would happen is you would most likely plunge all the way through your shelf material. And instead of offsetting the depths, I think it's easier to just use a five by 30 and go in 15 millimeters into the shelf, 15 millimeters into the side. That's the easiest way. So let's put the five millimeter cutter head on. Since I'm using a five by 30, I wanna set the depth to 15. I'm gonna use these tabs right here to reference the sides. So we'll put a mortise 37 millimeters in here, 37 millimeters in here, no measuring. Using the tight setting, I'm gonna reference the base. Take the clamps off and I am a little, I'm not exactly centered because this is 20 millimeter plywood, but I'm just curious to see if, if we're on the line and even with the sides. <laughs> Look at that. I'm on the line, very cool. And if you can see this, there's no ridge there. Now the cool part about this is there is no measuring and I'm exact right on there. So I'd say that's a success. I'm not the biggest fan of miter joints because I can never get them tight. So we're going to try this little guy and we're gonna use the five by 30 domino. I had the five millimeter cutter head already installed. And what we're gonna do first is set our fence to 45 degrees. Since we did that, we are able to bottom out this. So hopefully you can see how that bottoms out and you get metal on metal right there. Tight setting, 15 millimeter depth. I'm honestly a little nervous about this one just because I know you can cut through. Referencing using those side tabs is really cool that you don't have to measure. Let's set up this next piece. The 
tip that I got was place this on and then pivot in like this. So that's been really helpful to make sure I'm registering off of that pin. So check this out. For whatever reason, this tab isn't kicking out. So I'm gonna raise this. I told you I'm not gonna hide anything from you. Oh, hey. Well, that would be good to know. Whew. All right. Now, I was having trouble re registering. Let's try it again. Looks like my height on this one was off. So I'm not sure what I did wrong there. We got a mistake. I've never been so happy. They look off. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, I don't know what I messed up, but I'm kind of glad I did because definitely that last one we did when I had to adjust for the tabs, got something off. All right, so I just recut this last mortise, and as you can see, it's wide, but this is tight, this is tight, this is tight. I don't think that's really gonna matter. So let's see if we get a better alignment. I'm gonna put both of the tenons in this one. That did it. We got a perfect miter. Wow, that's actually probably like the best miter that I've ever done. It's hard to convey how that feels to be able to do a tight miter joint with something like this. This is without question the best miter I've ever done in my life. It is pretty flawless. Glue in a clamp, that would be perfect. No need to caulk it or paint it or touch it up. Pretty amazing. And even with messing up that one domino joint, it shows you just the power of uh, be, being able to have a precise tool, but also use it loosely, not sloppily, but loosely. And I was able to recut this mortise and some might actually want to do that because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So. Man, I'm impressed. Let's try this miter joint, which is common, maybe like in picture frames. And we're gonna use the eight by 40 domino. So we need to change the bit out of this. This currently has the five millimeter. I've already unplugged it. Let's change the cutter head. Do you wanna hear the coolest sound in the world? Since we're doing an eight by 40, I wanna be 20 millimeters in. Set my fence to 90. Since this material is 19 millimeters, I'm gonna round it up to 20 and just use the 20 millimeter depth stop. All right, this is interesting. So we have the tight setting on the far end because we're able to reference that. And then where I use my eye, okay. So if you're ever curious how it looks with the tight versus the loose, here we go. But I hate miters, because I can never get them perfect. Pretty good. Now if you inspect closely, you can see a little bit of a raised gap there. And I'm not sure if that was because of my placement or if that's just maybe movement in the wood. It does seem like it's slightly off, which is probably my problem not referencing very well. However, I am impressed. I would still consider that a win given that that's my first ever miter joint like this. If I really wanted to, I could probably recut 
those loose ones. I feel like that's where the problem is. Yeah, I'd give myself a B minus on this one. Not the best, but not a train wreck. I'm gonna go ahead and recut this loose one just because it bothers me. So I found by loosening up this loose height, I was able to correct most of that discrepancy. I'm also not sure how much of that has to do with me or the stock not being perfectly flat, but it catches your fingernail. That would get sanded out. Nothing to fuss about, but I think for first time using the machine, it's okay. The kit I have comes with this narrow stock guide, which allows you to do things like face frames really, really fast and easy. So I've got some sample stock here, kind of typical face frame stock, painted popular. And we're going to pretend that we're making a face frame and see how fast it is and how accurate it is to place dominoes in the ends here and then in the sides here. I think on this side, I'm gonna do the tight setting. And then on this side, I'm gonna do the loose setting and we'll see what's comparable. All right, I've got all my tight pieces set up right here. And I have this set on the loose setting. I'm gonna turn it on, set it to tight, and then go for it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about this one, just with the different, the tight and the loose, and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So start with the tight. And we'll start with the first one. Second rail, wow, okay. The loose ones should be all good. <laughs> it actually worked. So this is the tight side and it's perfect. Perfect and perfect. And then with the loose side, you can see there's lots of play. You can fine tune that. We're good there and we're good there. And we have a face frame. I think I'll give myself an A on that one. I'm kind of surprised. All right, the one time that I have used the Domino before this was gluing a panel up just like this, putting a Domino in these joints. I've done this with biscuits before, which is kind of pointless. You can use dowels, you can just use glue. But when I did it with the Domino before, I marked and measured out all my mortises and then tried my best to line up all the lines using the tight sitting and I actually got it. That was before I knew about the 37 millimeter pin locations and before I knew what these were. So I'm gonna set these to 150 millimeters, which is roughly six inches. And I'm going to try to mortise and join these two pieces of rough walnut together and see how fast and how accurate it is. I'm also gonna do a trick where you do the first one on the tight setting and then all the other ones on the loose setting, which is a pro tip I got. Also interesting is uh, these are cutoffs from an old project. There's a slight warp in them and only one face and one side is jointed and planed and they're different thicknesses. So I'm going to reference off the top and when we're done, the bottom will be a different thickness and then I can run that through the planer. All right, these cross stops are pretty cool and pretty easy. You just set them on the wing like that turn the knob towards you. And what's cool is these have little inventions every millimeter. And so I'm setting that to 150. I can use these pins as references in my mortises. What you can see here is on this first one that I did on the tight setting. I just referenced like that. 
and that gives me a tight mortise 37 millimeters from the edge and then using this cross stop I reference a register inside there and then now my spacing is automatic because I set it at 150 millimeters. Now we'll say it is odd using these cross stops and not marking or measuring, doing that for the first time. But I trust the system and I'm curious to see how this worked out. To my eyes, they look pretty lined up. Here's all the loose settings that were done with the cross stops. And then there's the tight ones. And what's great about this is if you can see on the back side, these are not even close to being the same height, but the face and the inside are jointed and planed. So they should made up with the domino because I referenced off the top, they should made up fine and then I can plane the bottom. So let's put some dominoes in, see how we did. And no surprise, that's good. And then we'll move on to the loose ones. I'm using an eight by 40. So the idea would be to get your tight one aligned first, which is tight, and then my eye. These all seem to be lined up. <laughs> I've always heard people talk about, I use dominoes for alignment and now I totally get what they're talking about because I was able to align the face of this while the bottom isn't even close to being similar, it's all rough. So I could glue and clamp this piece up and then run this through my planer on the bottom and have a nailed up board. And the best thing is no marking or measuring outside of just telling myself where my tight joint was. Let's say using the cross stops was a win. I'm actually pretty impressed with the tool. I'd say it lives up to the height and the dust collection on it is amazing. Now, the elephant in the room is the price of this thing. When you talk about this tool, people lose their mind because of the price. And one of the things I think people forget is the Fest tool is aimed at professional carpenters, people who make their living and their livelihood using tools. And so things like durability, precision, reliability, health and safety, speed and accuracy, all of these things matter to a professional. And while this I think is maybe $1,200 or so, while that is a lot of money, if you're running a business and you're making money from a tool, $1,200 is a very, very, very cheap investment to make your living off of. I think where the hate comes is from hobbyists who are in their garage and they're kind of conditioned to see power tools that look like this to cost a couple of hundred dollars at the store down the street. And there's a little bit of sticker shock because you're comparing tools that are aimed at hobbyists to tools that are aimed at the mobile high-end carpenter. So is it worth it? And it's really hard to answer that question for everybody because everyone has a different budget, everyone has different goals, everyone has different things they enjoy about the process. For me, I like getting to the end of the process and so something like this is awesome because I'm able to enjoy the process of woodworking faster. I don't enjoy 
hand cutting things and taking a long, slow time doing woodworking projects. I like to be moving, I like progress, and I like to see a finished product. So for me, whose passion and hobby is woodworking, and I don't mind investing in things, even if I need to sell other tools or do side projects or, or do whatever to be able to afford it, I enjoy the process of using a high quality tool and getting the project done. So for me, it's worth it. If you want to learn more about this, check out Festool's website. They have so many other tools, tools I didn't even know that they made because they don't end up on social media. I'll leave a link to their website, go check them out. I've gotten to know um, some of the people who work for them and I gotta say, I have been so impressed, not just with the tools and the company, but also the people behind the company. Out of all the tool brands that I've worked with and I've interfaced with, the best people work for this company. Go check them out.